Amen. Praise you, Lord. You may be seated, guys. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're still dealing with the new man seated. We've looked at the the widths of the New Testament briefly. Right? And there are more, but some of them are like linked together. But you've got buried with Christ, quickened with Christ, amen, raised with Christ, seated with Christ, and coming back with Christ in all his glory. That's the, the good one, isn't it, Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. And as you can see from what even Anik shared today, the plan has been set. It's already complete. It's already decided. You're coming back with him. And he will never lose you. Amen? Another, another proof and evidence of eternal security. Because he's already planned. He's already said. He's promised he and you are coming back together. Amen? Praise the Lord. Which means, of course, there must be a rapture in between. Another proof. I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? Praise our Lord. Amen? Lifting off this ground. Hallelujah. Amen. So we've been looking at the whiffs of the New Testament. And I encourage you to type in on your, you know, on your internet thing, on the, the app, you know, type in the with Christ. With Christ. With Christ. There's also crucified with Christ, which links with burial in Christ. And there's a few others. Okay? But these are the main ones. I call this the Holy Ghost selfie. Okay, this is the selfie of the Spirit that we must look at and understand who we are with Christ, okay? And that it's one and the same process, and I talked about being in sync with Christ. We are actually in sync with Christ, okay? These were not separate events. He wasn't buried, raised, quickened, raised, and then seated and coming back. And then he thought, well, because I've now done it, I'll now make you buried, quick and raised, seated. No, this all happened at the same time. We underwent in him the same process exactly as he went through the same process. Praise the Lord. And so you've got to get that into your head because it's the true Holy Ghost selfie. It's the way you should live your life. It's the way you should approach work. It's the way you should approach family life. And the difficulties that we can face sometimes is all with the Holy Ghost selfie. Okay? And, uh, and it's all in you. Okay? We are representatives of Christ on this planet. We're passing through. And Paul says, I'm an ambassador of Christ. He represents Christ who is in heaven and he's in heaven. He represents physically Christ upon this planet to enforce the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. And so that's what we're to do. That's the way you're to live. Okay. So today we're going to look at, we are seated with Christ. Okay. We are sat together with Christ. Okay, what I've explained to you so far has simply been highlights. You need to study some of the... I mean, I could go on for months in the details of some of these things. These are the highlights I believe the Lord wants me to share with you, but you must study for yourself as well. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, so uh, we're looking again at Ephesians 2, verse 5 and 6. Okay, uh, which has been the main verses. Even when you were dead in your sins... Have he quickened us together with Christ? By grace you are saved. And has raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Don't worry, I will read that again. Okay, Ephesians 2 verses 5 and 6. Okay. Even when you were dead in sins, have he quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And have raised us up together. Same time. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're looking at sat together today. And has raised us up together and made us sit together. Now look at the person you're sitting next to. 
and say, I'm not sitting next to you, I'm sitting next to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And, um, and that's the reality. Right? It's a paradox, isn't it? We're on the earth, but we're not of it. We're here living, but we're not really here. We're with Christ. And so our bodies have just got to catch up with the reality of the spiritual realm. Amen. The word here to sit means this. To cause to sit together. Place together. To sit in company. Okay, I'll say that again. The word sit means to cause to sit together. Place together. To sit in company. Okay, this is something that's not of yourself. That's why it says, inserted into that middle of the verse is, by grace you are saved. This is all by grace, folks. This is the Father's choice. This is the Father's plan. This is the Father's decision. For you, praise the Lord. Amen? For you. And you ever thought to yourself, I mean, there's thousands in hell now. Why not then? Why me? I've blowed you away with that thought. Some of you don't go that far in your thinking. <laughs> I do. Because that makes me rejoice. Because there's no physical reason for him to choose me. There's no good reason to choose me. There's nothing I've done to choose me. There's no holiness of action I've performed to give him reason to choose me. To save me from going to hell and the lake of fire which I would have had to endure for all eternity. There is no reason for him to choose me at all. The only reason, the Bible says, is the counsel of his own will. Because he first decided to love me. Because he decided. He first loved us, the Bible says. It's his decision. I ain't got a clue why. But mine is not to ask why. Paul says this. How can the clay say to the potter, why did you make me so? See, he's tr- in the book of Romans, he's trying to reveal to them, this is God's choosing. This is God's choice. Don't argue, rejoice. Amen. Amen. And that's something that causes you to really praise the Lord. To really worship. To really rejoice in the Lord when you're at home. Not just here. Amen. To have your worship time at home. And don't worship. I'm now going to worship the Lord. Amen. This is, this is some praises unto the Lord. You see. And thankfulness. Why he chose you? I haven't got a clue. I wouldn't choose you. You wouldn't choose me. Hallelujah. But he did. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I rejoice in that. But this is causing you to sit down with Christ. Remember, this is in sync. In sync. As he sat down, you sat down. He didn't sit down for you. You're right. He did not sit down for you. He sat down with you. Big difference. Big difference. This is why Jesus said after his resurrection, he said something so amazing to the disciples, it must have knocked them to six. He says, my God is now your God. My Father is now your Father. We're with, we're together. In fact, the Bible calls him our elder brother. That's how united you are to Jesus Christ because he became an immortal man. Amen? Is that amazing? I, I think it's amazing. So he didn't do it just for you. He did it with you. Amen. His grace is the element for, but his action is with. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he's caused you to sit together, to place together, to seat in company. You have been seated in heavenly places. 
Amen? With Christ and in Christ. We are placed together and we are not separate from God. Amen? I feel like the Lord's far from me. All that is nonsense. Amen? Paul said, let's go with Paul's gospel. Amen? You want to know how close he is? He says he's even in your mouth. Amen. That's how close he is. Amen. I just want to be close to Lord. You know, you know, we sing songs. I just want to be close. Draw nigh unto thee. You've drawn nigh. The Bible says that you've been, you was afar off. But now the blood of Christ has brought you nigh. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. The spirit you have is not yours. It's his. Amen. Amen. That's your spirit. The real you is Jesus. Amen. You've got to get it. The real you is Jesus. Amen. He says he is our life. It says in Ephesians and Colossians. He is Colossians 3. He says he is our life. When he appears, we will see him as he is and we will know who we truly are. But we will be like him. That's how union is, you see. So you've been seated. You are not separate. You are in Christ. You are keeping good company. It says to seat in company and fellowship. You are keeping good company, folks. Amen? So when you think you're alone, you're not alone. Amen? When you're in a family crisis, you're not alone. When you're in a hospital ward and somebody you know is sick, very sick, you're not alone. Amen? When your kids may be going haywire and you get frustrated, you're not alone. When you're faced with a job situation, you're not alone. You are not alone. You keep with you the company of God. Amen? You've got the company of God. You're seated in fellowship and company with God himself. This is not doctrine only, folks. This is reality of living. This is where your faith has to operate. I'm in company with God. So what can man do to me? They could kill your body and you're still a winner. That's the reality. It's your mindset, folks, that can do anything to you. You have still won. You've not lost a victory yet. You only think you have. You only think you've lost sometimes. You ain't lost nothing. You ain't lost nothing. Amen. Because you're more than an overcomer. In Christ, you ain't lost nothing. You only think you have. Amen. Everything's to your benefit. If you, if all things work together for good that love God. You love God. Well, how does that work? For, I don't know how it all works, but it works. God makes it work because he won't allow you to have a non-victory. He makes it work his way. You're in company with God. So when you think you're alone, maybe you're alone in your job situation or a sickness situation, you're not alone. You have God as your company, and that's the greatest company to have. Amen? Amen? But you must believe it. You must exercise. See, the whole messages I've been preaching is about exercising what you already have. That's what I'm trying to get through. I hope I'm doing it, but I'm trying to do it. Because that changes everything. Amen? That changes everything. I'm with God and God is with me. How do I know sometimes how our flesh operates and how this spiritual truth comes into being? If Jesus was to appear physically now with me, you'd go, ooh. Amen? And if he stayed with me when I went into that workplace, well, let's take you. Yeah, you'd probably feel a bit different if you physically saw him standing next to you, amen, walking with you into that workplace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. 
Is that right? Amen. Or walking with you into your fam- uh, some member of the family's home. Amen. You would act differently. Or walking into that hospital ward with a person you know who's sick. You would walk in differently if you physically saw him present with your eyes. But we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And that's more real than my eyes. The reality is... He don't walk just with me, he walks in me and through me. Amen. When I'm in the ward, Jesus is in the ward. When I'm in a family home, Jesus is in the family home. So you just a change to what you believe and exercise. It's more real than what you see with your physical eye. He's waiting for you to catch up with your belief and actions to what is reality. Amen. You're in good company. Amen. It says bad company corrupts. Amen. Good company. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good company with God changes everything. Amen. I'm telling you, folks. Hallelujah. So you're not alone. This Greek word comes from two words. With, as I've already explained before, and I'll remind you of what that word with means. The word with in these scriptures means in sync. It means union, association, resemblance, process. We went through the same resurrection and ascension and seated process of Jesus. Companionship. Amen. Your companion is Jesus. First and foremost. It's Jesus. And when you know his companionship... Do you know how to have companionship with others in the right way? See, his companionship teaches us how to be a companion with other people. Amen, is that right? Yes. And that's what you've got to understand. I mean, there's a great today, especially with the way people are on the internet, and there's a, there's a, a, a great loneliness, an epidemic of loneliness and lack of companionship. Isn't there? Now, Christians are supposed to be the light in that situation. Amen? It's no use going into your work, which is full of people who are lonely, right? And say, oh, I'm miserable. I'm all alone. I feel like God's left me. That's not light, is it? We are to walk in knowing we have companionship with Jesus. Amen. And so we are able to show companionship to others and show people Jesus, the greatest companion there is. Amen. That's our witness. Amen. That's our witness. It doesn't matter what state you're in, in terms of your profile, you'll have companionship with Jesus first and foremost. Amen. Now that hasn't got to be received. Has he? Okay. That hasn't got to be earned. That hasn't got to be prayed for, fasted for, studied for. You've already received it. If you haven't already received it, then you're not seated with Christ. But the Bible says you are seated with Christ. So what all you have to do is then just live it, experience it, enjoy it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Enjoy my companionship with Jesus. Hallelujah. It includes completeness. Praise the Lord. You're complete in him, the Bible says. It means, another word, to make, to sit down. I don't like sitting down too much sometimes. Yes? I have to, or sometimes with my wife's words... A maid to sit down. Yes. Because I come from work sometimes and then I'll carry on with some jobs around the house and I don't give too much time to sit down sometimes, you know. But she's taught me sometimes to sit down. Amen. And relax for a while. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And to a point, to set, to confer a kingdom, to settle down. To have a fixed abode. Now does that to you sound like you can lose it? 
You've been settled down. You've been made to sit to get down. Because the flesh wants to rise up, doesn't it? The flesh wants to do things. And we do do things. We are doers of the word. Right? Aren't we? I mean, James says, don't be a base of the word. Well, I've got that face there. That's a good one. Because the Paul says we've obeyed the word of truth already. Yeah. We've become born again. We believe the gospel. We've obeyed the gospel. James says be doers of the word. That's slightly different, you say. Because it's all in us now. Let's just live it out by faith. Faith shows it. Now we've received it by faith, James says. Now let's do it. We do it. Paul says we're living epistles. All that you read in the New Testament, that's you. <laughs> Glory to God. You read the New Testament, that's you. Paul says so. Believe what he says. You're living epistles. So think of Paul's epistles, that's you. Now you just got to live it. James says, be doers of it. Amen? You see, it's a change of mindset. You've already obeyed it, now just live it, do it. We spend more time doing it, we'll get more results. Than trying to believe something we've already believed for and received already. Praise the Lord. Okay, you'll, you'll think about that one maybe. But anyway, <laughs> hallelujah. To confer a kingdom. Amen. Our seated position, first of all, shows us a number of things. It shows us that Christ's sacrifice is acceptable. It shows the fact by the fact that he's in heaven. So he was received back into heaven. So his sacrifice was acceptable. Because if he wasn't acceptable, he would never have been allowed to be seated next to the Father. So first of all, the seated position shows he's acceptable. Okay? With his sacrifice. It has been accepted. Praise the Lord. Dealt with sin once and for all. Once and for all, praise the Lord. Amen? So why are you trying? Right, hallelujah. We don't deal with sin. Oh, blimey, I'll never get invited anyway. <laughs> we don't deal with sin, do we? No. Christ dealt with sin yeah. once and for all. Yes. We just do the reckoning. Yeah. Romans 6, we reckon ourselves dead to sin. Yeah. Amen. We do the reckoning. That's it. That word reckoning is simply calculation. You do the calculation that Christ did it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Done. Now I walk. Not only do I reckon myself dead, but alive. But alive. Amen. God hasn't left me. I'm alive to God. And that life flows, you see, and changes your behavior. Because if you walk in the spirit, amen, you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh, Paul says. So you walk in that life, you'll have more time in the life than in the flesh. That's what Paul says. That's what he's trying to get them to understand. Amen. All right. So he's accepted. We also are now accepted. Because we're with Christ seated. So he doesn't look at you on a daily basis and think, I don't know if that mass is acceptable today. Amen. You don't go through that every day you wake up. That's a horrible way for a Christian to live. And Christians do. Don't they? And they go through that because they're deceived. It's only deception, folks. That's the only weapon that the enemy uses against Christians. It's pure deception. He ain't got no other. I mean, the Bible says, when the world see him, they'll say, is that him? That's what it says about in the book of Revelation. They'll see him as the devil is, and they'll say, is that the being that deceived the whole world? The old serpent? You understand? Because his weapon is deception. He deceives Christians all the time. Amen? So you don't have an acceptability on a daily basis based on you. Your acceptability is acceptable in Christ and with Christ. Praise the Lord. 
We live out the fact that I'm acceptable. So we don't spend time in prayer saying, Lord, I, I know I'm such a rubbish person sometimes and I know you don't quite accept everything about me and, and I go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. I'm boring Jesus. And on and on and on and on and on. You understand? I can spend more time Living the acceptability out. So everybody sees a smile on my face and says, what is it about you that's different to everybody else? It's the same kind of smile you had when you first got saved, knew all your sins was dealt with before you was taught different by the church. (laughs) Ain't that right, Brian? For the first few months of your Christianity before religion got hold of you in the churches, you smiled and everybody says, something different about you. See, you first received the gospel in truth. The reality of it being born again, you knew you and Jesus was like that. And you wanted to tell everybody about it. Is that right? That's the way we're supposed to keep on living. Amen. Does that mean we don't make mistakes? Of course we do. Does that mean I never argue with Barbara and shout at the kids? Of course I do. Amen. Of course I do. Amen. Praise Lord, no, I can change my behaviour because I'm acceptable. Not because I'm trying to get acceptable. I can change it because it's already done in me. I can. Amen. Is that right? Praise the Lord. Right. Hallelujah. Secondly, it shows us that Christ has no more need to deal with sin because he's rested from his work. He's seated. It's a rest position. He isn't going to keep getting up out of his seat. Nor should you. Nor should you, because you're with him. You don't get up out of your seat. Amen? You can't keep sacrificing for your own sin. There's no altar to go to. There's no more lamb to be slain. What are you going to sacrifice? It's already done. Amen. We need to live out, therefore, the righteousness of Christ. He says he's made us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what we concentrate on now. So it's not denying that we need to change behaviour, but it's because we are all these things, we now concentrate on living out the righteousness of God with a heart and a conscience that's clear. Amen? Because the Bible says we have a clear conscience. We have no consciousness of sins. Oh, what, doesn't the Hebrew say that? Yes. Hebrew says, doesn't that, doesn't it say in Hebrew, bro, you've heard that? There's no more consciousness of sins. Yeah. He's purged our conscience from dead works and from sin. Yeah. We have the Holy Ghost as our regulator. Yeah. Amen? How do I know when I've sinned? Because the Holy Spirit is grieved and I feel his emotion. Yeah. I feel because we're one. So when he's grieved, I feel the grieving. That's what I'm regulated by. Not my conscience, because that could be up and down. And he's purged that anyway, so I have no consciousness of sin anymore. That's why the Corinthian church did what they did. And Paul had to say, stop. (laughs) Because they believed the gospel so much, they didn't have a consciousness of what they was doing wrong. And he had to say, now you're doing wrong. And they live out Christ. (laughs) You get me? Oh, hallelujah. So he talks to them about the Holy Spirit, the temple of the Holy Ghost, because he wants them to understand their relationship with the Holy Spirit means everything to their behaviour. Because they'll know he's grieving. And they can change. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. I know you won't hear this anywhere else, but that's true. Praise the Lord. This seated position in Christ is our priestly position from which we administer the kingdom of God on earth from heaven. Amen. The position is fixed. We cannot be moved. It's our unmovable home. Praise the Lord. We are in a heavenly realm, in heavenly places. Our seat is in the abode with Christ in heavenly places. This word again denotes fixed position in relationship to rest. Meaning that this rest in God is fixed and never changes. Heavenly places is the heavenly regions. It is the abode of God. 
His purposes, his temple sanctuary. It's our heavenly origin and nature. That's all in the Greek words. Our heavenly origin and nature. We are the true aliens on this planet. We have been born, as Peter said, by the seed of God. We have God DNA. You better not have it from your father. I put that in on purpose, you see. It makes you think, doesn't it? What do you mean, Ray? Okay? The spiritual supernatural of you hasn't got your, your natural father in it. You better not do, because that's Adamic from Adam. Regenerated through the process of reproduction. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Well, we ain't got that. Not the real you. But if you keep looking at the outward you, you've got problems. But if you look at the real you, Jesus, in you, you'll realise you're of God. Amen. Amen. And that's on the way home, physically. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you have the God DNA. The purpose of living now for us is revealing God and Christ to the world. This heavenly position gives us an ability of ruling and blessing. Amen. Which we must use. Not just have. Not just appreciate, not just have a teaching about, not just have notes about, not just have a tape about, not just have a book about. We must use in every circumstance of your life. Because you are acting from a seated position. Amen? Ephesians 1 verse 3 says this, and then we come in around communion. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Here we go again. In heavenly places in Christ. When you look up that word in, it blows you away. Just the word in alone is enough to give you revelation forever. Okay? For he has blessed you with all spiritual blessings. Can somebody tell me what all means? All. You sure about that, Mo? Does it mean just a bit? No. Most of it? No. Or does it mean all? All. All spiritual blessings in Christ in heavenly places. Because you're seated in heavenly places in Christ. You have received all the blessings that Christ has. He ain't just given you some blessing. You've received all the blessing that has been confirmed upon Christ as the immortal man risen from the dead. My God, your God, my Father, your Father. You have received all the blessings that he's received. You're joint heirs with Christ. What do heirs receive? They receive the blessings of the inheritance. You're joint Oh, oh gee, I wish I could communicate it with you. Your joint is. You receive the same. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> if you can only believe this, you'll explode. Amen. You understand? So he's blessed you with all spiritual blessings. Not some, all of them. Already received it. Yes. It's already deposited inside of you. Amen. Amen. It's already there. What do you want more blessing for? I mean, it's conferences. I'll ask for blessing. You want to see more blessing? Then give. That's a normal way to get an offering. (laughs) Amen. I could give to the day I die. I won't receive any more blessing. Will I? I won't receive any more blessing. I'm blessed. I can give plenty of blessing. I say, Lord, I'm here on this planet to give blessing. Because when I give blessing, I don't have to say, Father, shall I do, I, do you want me to bless? It's up to you, son. What do you want to do? If I bless, then God's behind it. Because I, even if I made the decision to bless, he's behind it. Because we're one. And if it's in my heart to bless, then I'm going to bless. And when I bless, that person, that situation is blessed. No doubt about it. 
Like when you go into a home, Jesus says, speak peace. Doesn't he? Now that's not just something to say. It's something supernatural. The peace of God comes to their own. If they reject the gospel, you receive that peace back by wiping the dust off your feet. And guess what? They're in for havoc in that home. You understand? What you do is amazing if you believe. Praise the Lord. So he's blessed you and I've run out of time. Let's come over to communion. Oh my word. Praise the Lord. You can get the kids if you want to. Then I'm going to read five verses of scripture and then we're going to break bread. Hallelujah. I'll never get through all this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, I want to read some scriptures to you. Ephesians 1.20 Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. This is talking about Jesus. Hebrews 1 verse 3 Who being in the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, praise the Lord, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Another verse, Hebrews 8 verse 1. Now of the things which I have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Hebrews 10, 12. But this man, this is Christ, this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, hallelujah, forever, <laughs> forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Hebrews 12, verse 2. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Now if all them scriptures are true of Christ, it is true of us. Because yeah. we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So what must we do now as we come around this communion table? Amen. We must do two things. Okay, and understand. That we are to then obey, knowing all these truths that I've taught over these weeks. We must do this. Colossians 3 1. If you then be risen, if you've been risen, if all these supernatural selfies, I call it, if it's all been done, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sits on the right hand of God. That's what you are now to do. Seek those things which are above. Now, that is not a verse of scripture for preachers on the God channel to manipulate with. Give, if you're not, you're not seeking those things which are above. That's not a manipulation scripture, that's a revelation scripture. If you was to close your eyes now... And you was to open them in heaven, literally, right? You would see everything going on around you that's of heavenly places, the abode of God. That's what you are to seek, live, and do. You're seeking everything that Christ is and you are. You meditate upon that, you live that. That's what it means. It changes your behaviour, it changes any problems, it changes any habits you might have that are wrong, it changes. Everything as your mind is set on what who Christ is and who you are in Christ. Amen. Amen. So that's the first thing it does. The second thing it does, and then taking communion for definite, I promise. Hallelujah. That's not preacher's language, that's the truth. <laughs> the word sink 
is also connected to a word as in with Christ, sink in Greek. It's also connected to a word called meta, okay? And it basically means this. Our union with Christ also means union with his body of Christ, one another. See, we are in sync, in sync not only with Christ, but we're in sync one with another. Because we're of the same source. You ain't got a different Jesus to me. Have you, Brian? He ain't got a different life. He is our life. We have the same life. We have the same dad. We have the same brother. We have the same experience. We have the same life existing on us. We have the same Holy Ghost. So we're in sync one with another. All we have to do is realise that. So as we come around this communion table now and break bread together, we are with Christ and with one another. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So this bread represents the body of Jesus that has been broken for you. And the wine or the juice is his blood. And it means that you have a new covenant together with Christ. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen.